the ancient Silk Road. Vast, extreme, yet invaluable to the empires of the East and West. The trade of the luxurious silk fabric changed the course of human history, creating a world beyond our wildest imagination. Now, a new Silk Road arises. Unleashing the power of innovation, transforming all in its path. Building a web of connections, uniting nations old and new. I'm Denise Kelly. The structure alone is the symbol of the human spirit. And I'm Liam Bates. Goodbye, world! We're going on the adventure of a lifetime, from Xi'an to Istanbul, and the cities in between, to learn about the old Silk Road with a new Chinese generation. While finding out what its future could look like. This is the story of a new Silk Road. This is Expedition X. Rich in history. Diverse. At one time, the richest city in the world, Xi'an, was the eastern starting point of the ancient Silk Road. One of the first places to prosper from trade between the Chinese Empire and the West. This is probably what people would have seen, you know, like at the end of the Silk Road. This was the heart of China. This is basically the story where it all begins, isn't it? The ancient Silk Road spanned China, Central Asia, and went as far as India and Europe, an early form of globalization. Now, the past is converging with the future on the Silk Road. Historic routes are being upgraded with innovation. Old alliances strengthen for new trade and exchange. Xi'an is in the center of it all. It's one of the few places, I think, along the Silk Road where you see really obvious the remnants of that cultural integration. I was born in Switzerland but I've been a dedicated student of Chinese culture for over 10 years. I'm blown away by how a Silk Road icon like Xi'an is transforming into a global megalopolis. Traditional caravans give way to modern transportation. This Chinese generation are more mobile than ever before and want to explore the world, like the convoy of the Destination X Tour. The cavalry, ready to roll out. These adventurers are driving the Silk Road, Hi. famous Hi. for its trade, but also Hi. its stunning Hi. and Hi. extraordinary Hi. landscape. Hi. Hi. From Xi'an, they will explore the deserts of western China before reaching Istanbul in Turkey. As the convoy prepares to move out, I go on ahead to check out their final destination, Istanbul. Shaped by the great Roman civilization and the all-conquering Ottoman Empire, Istanbul overcame war and disruption to become one of the world's first truly cosmopolitan cities. Born of Singaporean and German parents, I've always been attracted to the city's east-west DNA. This is my second time in Istanbul, and I have to say that I never get sick of the city because it has this pulse. There is a uniqueness, obviously, in its identity. They don't have the borders to explain, oh, I belong here, I belong there. And that is what 
principally draws me to its culture, and it draws me to want to know more about them. I'm curious to find out how this ancient city is adapting to a Silk Road on the rise. Back in China, Liam is discovering how places like Xi'an and Istanbul are inspiring new cities on a 21st century Silk Road. Located on the upper reaches of the Yellow River, envisioned as a haven for cultural exchange and boosted by growth on the Silk Road, Yinchuan City in Ningxia is China's answer to their very own Istanbul. It aspires to be the hub for Chinese Arab businesses, despite being thousands of kilometers away from the Middle East. But like local official who shows off their ever-expanding central business district. Crazy Crazy is a good word to describe this. They're not trying to do it on a small scale. This isn't, you know, a small experiment to see if it works. 75 square kilometers of, you know, very modern China Arab city. You could say that this busy work site symbolizes the city's ambitious plan. Don't be fooled. Rising from the soil will be the tallest skyscraper in China's northwest, 300 meters high. It's very adventurous and very brave what they're trying to do, to go from fields to the center of a city connecting China to the Middle Eastern world. Anywhere in the world was to do this successfully, it would be China. As Yinchuan undergoes transformation, over 6,000 kilometers away, Istanbul is also rebuilding. Fueled by new developments on the Silk Road, the city is leveraging its rich heritage and redefining its historic role as a link between continents. The Yavuz Sultan Selim Bridge. To really come to terms with its scale and purpose, you have to be up close and personal. Hey, Evan. How are you, man? Engineer Evans Bay has lived and breathed this bridge for over three years. It's massive. It's, it's big. Did you ever imagine you'd be building such a bridge? No, no I never expected this kind of the bridge. The widest suspension bridge on the planet is supported by two towers that dwarf even skyscrapers. It's a modern engineering feat, connecting east and west for a third time over the intimidating Bosphorus Straits. Such an ambitious project means that the team is a multicultural affair. More than 1,000 workers, so not only Turkish workers, but also Korean workers. Because in Turkey, this kind of work, the bridge is for the first time. You didn't look. Yes, yes. It's normal, it's normal, it's normal. You all look like ants up there. <laughs> To truly appreciate the grand scale of the project, I join Evan's team in the air. <laughs> don't scare, don't scare, don't be scared. Okay? <laughs> wow. Okay, welcome to all top of the tower. The magnitude of building something like this is just insane. And just the structure alone is like the symbol of the human spirit. I can say that this is one of the masterpieces of human construct. It's also the 21st century symbol of the new Silk Road. So what is it that Istanbul anticipates from a new Silk Road? I will have to travel east to find out joining forces with Liam as we retrace a journey made by many others before us. Our destination, Dunhuang. What will this remote region tell us about a future shaped by a new Chinese generation?
I actually do feel like I've stepped into China from 2,000 years ago. Dunhuang, Gansu Province, China. Engulfed by the Gobi Desert, the city lies at the crossroads of the ancient Silk Road. I'm Liam Bates, and with my fellow traveler, Denise Keller, we're finding out how Dunhuang remains relevant on a 21st century Silk Road. To really understand the modern Silk Road and what it means, you have to understand where it started. What was the original, real Silk Road? Intersecting routes to India, Mongolia, and even Siberia, Dunhuang was an important gateway to and from the old capital, Xi'an. Centuries ago, the legendary Chinese Buddhist monk, Xuan Zheng, braved this desert on a pilgrimage to India. While it took him years to complete his journey, we managed this leg in no time with modern engineering. What does this accessibility mean for an aspiring Chinese generation? Perhaps Lawrence Xu has an answer. An international fashion designer, Lawrence has styled royalty and Hollywood stars. He was the first Chinese designer to show at Paris Fashion Week. For him, Dunhuang isn't just a place for spiritualism, but also for inspiration. The iconic Mogao Caves of Dunhuang, also known as the Thousand Buddha Caves. It's here where Lawrence turns legends on stones into timeless fashion. Isn't that amazing how they just like carved this entire temple out of a yeah. sand dune mountain? <laughs> it's pretty damn how cool. How did they do that? Over 400 caves form the UNESCO World Heritage Site, home to a kaleidoscope of religious murals painted by pilgrims over the course of a thousand years. Containing not only Buddhist art, but also other religions. The Mogao Caves is one of the greatest symbols of early cultural exchange. Look in this cave and there's some things which are traditionally Chinese and some which are clearly more of an Indian Buddhist influence, right? How would you interpret this on the catwalk? Wow, look at that dress. Every single thread doing this like like gradient patterns. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Haute couture is the highest art in fashion, and there is no boundaries. He's taking art and creating new art, using ancient craft, but then modernizing, bringing it to a contemporary level, and then exploding it to the world to see. It was from here that a Chinese envoy named Zhang Qian first headed west in search of military allies, inadvertently opening up trade with the rest of the known world. And the most prized commodity was Chinese silk. But what defines the next chapter of China's growth? State-of-the-art high-speed rail. In less than a decade, China's high-speed rail network grew to be the world's largest. 
There are now plans to export their technology. At one of Xi'an's train depots, we meet manager Dong to check out the operation. We have a train 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 you are there to keep a comfortable environment. Please do not smoke. 过去的那个那个火车吧，都是那种烧煤的、蒸汽式的啊。这个这个一跑起来就冒冒冒冒烟。现在这个动车呢，就是人的乘坐体验确实是很好。I get a sense that their ambition is to aspire. To what the Euro Rail is in, in Europe. The world is going to be connected with these trains on these tracks, all made in China. You know, like the Silk Road again. Hello. 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 This is Manager Hello. Jack, Hello. who oversees the construction Hello. of the network's next most crucial Hello. element. It's railroads. 把技术真正说是引进来，我们消化，我们吸收，我们自己来制造我们自己的一个产品。你们需要铁路建设。我就可以带着我们的技术、我们的装备、我们的人员过去给你们修修高铁。On completion, the prefabricated sections of rail bridges are then sent to the outskirts of Xi'an for installation. We are getting front row seats to the event inside the bridge section. 小一坨啊 ！This is so cool. This thing is going to move. Very slowly. Oh, hey, we are totally moving. You in this area, will will you have a feeling like you are building a bridge? One by one, you put the trains in here. China, from the Chinese government, has taken the rail as a brand for China. Everyone has their own sense of identity. This is history in the making, you know. Back in Xi'an city, we join up with another powerful engine that is fueling China's rise. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> a booming Chinese generation. Mobile, curious about the world with an insatiable thirst for adventure. A great example is the Destination X Tour. Finally setting off today to explore their own country and beyond, connecting with new people and cultures. Uh, we're going to Lanzhou. 到乌鲁木齐，到伊斯坦布尔。哇哦，这条路我来走，这条路的话可能会意义非凡。The Destination X Travelers will cover a journey over 2,000 kilometers long. Thankfully, like us, they have modern engineering on their side. It's incredible terrain. It is actually. I mean, just like the <laughs> massive mountains over there. This is the Hexi Corridor. It's like the big gateway into China. In ancient times, this inhospitable environment, walled in by the Qilian Mountains, sometimes limited caravans to a narrow trackway. This actually was probably one of the most important places throughout Chinese history. And this little corridor here is sort of the way in and out. It's always such a key location to protect, to monitor for trade, etc. During the Han Dynasty, the Imperial Army fought a protracted war with the nomadic Xiongnu tribe just to gain security of this region. By going on this journey and doing what people did 2,000 years ago, there's still so much that we can learn from them. Their spirit of exploration. From China, we venture into the grasslands of Central Asia. China's explosive growth is not only reviving the Silk Road, it's also inspiring transformation in distant lands, where a futuristic city rose in the blink of an eye, with ambitions to be a global icon like Istanbul and Xi'an. For centuries, the Silk Road brought disparate kingdoms and markets together, sharing a common goal to trade goods and innovation.
the Central Asian country of Kazakhstan was a strategic hub. Its nomadic tribes brought Chinese paper to the West and imposed an early form of custom duty. In Soviet times, Kazakhstan starved and stagnated. But post-independence, the country is in a hurry to grow. And the result is astonishing. Welcome to Astana. Kazakhstan's sleek capital was conceived in just 15 years. Although less than a million people live in this desert metropolis, it's becoming one of the most important cities on a revived Silk Road. Denise and I are here to find out how and to get a glimpse of Kazakhstan's exciting future. Well, Astana really is a uh kind of unusual. <laughs> We've got this super ultra modern city block there. But you know, you turn around this way and then there's this crazy looking gold building. Just every building that pops out into mine here is just screaming for attention. Look at me, look at me. I'm finally here. I made it. To help us get a better understanding of our new surroundings, we meet Hi, architect hey, Ida. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how are hey, you, yeah. Ida? Why is there such an intense need to build this quickly? So the strategy is all about developing the infrastructure. As soon as we develop the infrastructure, we will achieve our goals. Everything that I'm seeing out here, there's so many symbolisms. During all this globalization, we need to have symbols to keep our identity. The Tranchater, it's a yurt shaped building. Mm -hmm. The yurt represents the nomadic culture. It's almost like that was yesterday, but we do not forget. Right now, we need to move forward, change our horses to the steel horses. The new look Kazakhstan isn't just embracing change, it's also hosting international events. This will soon be the 2017 World Expo. An engineering feat spanning almost 50 football fields. One of the world's largest gatherings of renewable um, energy innovation. So what, what are these? It's gonna an be? important project the for Ida. Will be well, even though we are a rich oil country, we are looking forward, finding the solution, not stepping on the same mistakes as the other countries. The expo is expected to draw up to 5 million visitors. That's more than five guess. times the population yeah. here. It will be a real test of this aspiring global city. It's very reminiscent of China. It's the speed in Kazakhstan and in Astana. There is a future and we want to go out and we want to get that. I think the difference is with China you have this idea that we're just falling back into our natural position in the world. Whereas in Kazakhstan, they're going from a nomadic society to a, an urban sedentary society, and that is a, a huge change. Kazakhstan's vision extends beyond just Astana. Like China, they are constructing an iron silk road with cutting edge technology. It's like an ultra modern, massive caravan. Kazakhstan is a landlocked country the size of Western Europe. Without horsepower, trading across this vast stretch of the ancient Silk Road would have been almost impossible. Today, Kazakhstan's nomadic traders have become settlers, trading in horsepower for mechanized transit to supercharge its future economy. More than a billion dollars of rail projects are planned for 2020. Inspired by China's radical growth and its modern high-speed rail system, Denise and I are going behind the scenes of one of Kazakhstan's best-kept secrets. These are not just any ordinary trains. I mean, these are like monsters. A five-year-old factory building 9,000-ton locomotives amongst the world's most powerful and temperature-resistant freight rail cars. Look at that, it's like an ultra-modern, massive caravan. 
Engineer Bernard is part of a French-Russian consortium armoring up for train on the Silk Road. And how many trains do you make in a year? This year we are going to make uh, nine. Uh, next year another uh, 34. And then uh, after we can go up to 50 full locomotives. What Kazakhstan needs is 295 locomotives. So we still have at least another uh, five, six years to go to fulfill the needs of Kazakhstan. Spurred by China's rise and a re-energized Silk Road, Kazakhstan aspires to be a land transport hub connecting China to Europe. Kazakhstan is in the heart of Central Asia. Any corridor you take from China to Europe, you will all have, always have a piece of it to us in Kazakhstan. Well, it's not just only about Kazakhstan and its railway system. It's also about to supply these trains to other countries and connecting all of it all over again, right back on the Silk Road. It's like remaking it. Despite becoming an urbanized and fast-paced society, the people of Kazakhstan have held on to their nomadic roots by preserving age-old traditions. We meet up with architect Ida Marud again, who's promised us the unique experience of playing one of their biggest local sports. It is called outdoor sport. It's wrestling on the horse, yeah. Raspak brings them back to the roots and reminds them that they are Kazakh. <laughs> All right, Liam, I guess it's going to be a test of your warrior skills. Yeah. I don't know, what do you think? Do I look as tough as that guy? I... <laughs> <laughs> How does one of these games end? Badly. Badly. <laughs> in horseback wrestling, fast and fierce tussles can be over in less than 10 seconds. OK. You got it. Think warrior. It's oh, a yeah. real test for Liam. No worries, totally in control. Liam, Brzean, what's time, skin? Kazakhstan is where I part ways with Liam as he continues his journey in China, and I return to Istanbul, the original gateway between the East and the West. Some of the world's greatest civilizations and religions call the 3,000-year-old city home. From Christianity during the Eastern Roman Empire to Islam in the Ottoman era, remnants of their rule remain even today. The magnificent Suleymaniye Mosque is one such icon, a blend of both Islamic and Byzantine architectural elements. Hello. How are you? Hi. Good to see you. Zainab Fadililu is the I'm first woman to design this. a mosque in Turkey, and this cross-cultural building is a source of inspiration. You have so many fascinating buildings juxtaposed of the old and the new. How do you draw all of that in into your philosophy? I grew on the Bosphorus, on the European side, overlooking to the Asian side. So, uh, we have got this two sides to our nature. The Sekirin Mosque is Zainab's latest creation, a place of worship that combines contemporary and traditional Ottoman design. All the elements are here. There's that tranquility. You see the structure in the spear here and that beautiful water flowing. I can feel the earth as well as the sky. The light is like in the old mosques, but in a different form. It's raindrops just it like, is. Yeah. you know, just luminescing everywhere. We have screening on the sides in the old like days. From the so it's the symbolism that you're like caressed by 
the leaves of the book. In, this, in the landscape of Istanbul, you have over 80,000 mosques. How does this stand in the future? The past 100 years was just copies of the older version or just copies of Europe. I had this chance of bringing today's architecture and uh, show that we are living today, our existence, without being somebody else. Zaina is staying true to her heritage and modernizing it with contemporary feels is quite fascinating. A story that needs to be told as a revolutionary of our time for the 21st century. As I continue to get glimpses of Istanbul's future, Liam is back in China paying homage to the original spirit of the Silk Road. Its success wasn't down to just luck of geography. Ancient China literally built the foundations that fuel its aspirations today. A nation with more than 5,000 years of history, China keeps one eye on the future while learning from its past. A great example of this is in Torpan City, Xinjiang, on China's western border. I mean, what's so incredible about this is just if you look around, listen, you can hear birds. You know, the ancient, huge trees. But the funny thing is, we're in the middle of a desert. After enduring the Taklamakan Desert, caravans that rested here needed food and water. So ancient Turpan engineers terraformed the land and transformed it into an oasis city. They built the Karaz Canals. This is almost like the underground Great Wall. It's an incredible feat of engineering, and it's so representative of the Silk Road. A vast and intricate system of underground channels and wells that are fed by water from surrounding mountains, measuring over 2,000 miles in length. It's really thanks to these Karas Canals that communities like this one can thrive here. The canals today are still vital to the people of Turpan. But being old, they need constant hey. maintenance. Can you imagine doing this 2,000 years ago in the Han Dynasty? <sighs> Honestly, probably the only thing which has really changed here in about 2,000 years is this and this. This is ridiculous. This is just literally under my crotch. This is what will be holding me up. Goodbye, world. <laughs> oh my god. This is absolutely insane. This is where the uh, basically sludge was up to last year is this point here. And so these guys have come down here once a year and like dredge literally probably tons of this stuff and get it out of here so the water, the water can run. Because if this water stops, you know, Torpan basically turns into a desert. Watch out! <laughs> However, fixes like these are only temporary. So experts from the Xinjiang Turpan Water Conservation Project hope to bring 21st century technology, such as remote sensors and satellite monitors, to update the system. Turpan's water is very safe. Now it's down below, and the water is increasing. 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 
，使他慢慢的逐渐呃就是恢复过来，还是希望他能够那个进行使用，嗯，呃，不完全是为了保存文物，当时的一些技术都其实都反映了当时那个劳动人民其实挺有智慧的。If China's ancestors could overcome the desert with some basic tools and ingenuity, how are modern Chinese planning to replicate more future cities? They have to cater to the urban lifestyle of around a billion people by the year 2030. Engineers in Yinchuan believe they have a solution to build in the desert at warp speed. Prefabrication technology. This is the managers who oversees a team that creates the building blocks of skyscrapers in factories before assembling them on location in a matter of days. We have used these materials to make the materials how much, 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 它会没有，没有，都会造成很大的浪费。它体现的，它这一整的结果呢，就是快。哎，你觉得这个，就这种技术，比如说出口到全球，嗯、就是以后，整个世界会不会，这是成为一种标准的盖房子的一种方式？我们这种方式，一定会成为这种建筑的发展的一个必然趋势。嗯，以后肯定会是这样做的。这种建筑呢，它是高工程化，它解决了人民工的问题。它解决了一个在建筑建设过程中和运营过程中的一个资源的缺陷，达到一个环保的一个要求。And China is kind of leading the world in terms of developing things fast. A lot of developing nations look to China as this example of, look, this is how you can get from where China was 30 years ago to where China is now. It's you know centuries in a very short period of time. China was always the source of trade and sending goods out. So in a sort of very strange modern way, we're kind of coming back to that. I think that's why on everyone's mind, it's just, you know, we need to go better, we need to go faster, we need to, to do a better job. This blend of age-old wisdom and forward thinking isn't just being reinterpreted for modern times in the East. Over in the West, Denise is about to find out how Istanbul is reshaping its future. Finally, we've reached Europe. <laughs> I believe that the Renaissance is actually happening here in Istanbul. There is no doubt that you have the past history of amazing empires but right now as we stand in this city with over 20 million in population this has become the new world city hello hi mustafa denise don't hi, nice, nice to, meet, to you. meet you there is no better example of istanbul's reinvention than here on the asian side of the bosphorus strait one of the world's busiest waterways. This is the Eurasia Tunnel. This is like the Matrix. I can't believe it's so big. Thank you. 25 meters below sea level, the Eurasia Tunnel is a 5.4 kilometer double-decker channel that will ease the traffic congestion between Asia and Europe. It's like we're in a different city. <laughs> 120,000 vehicles are expected to use the tunnel each day when completed in October 2016. How long did that take to go through the seabed? 16 months. We were excavating a meter per day, in average. We are under the Bosporus right now. <laughs> How cool is that? I'm just walking through the Bosphorus Sea. <laughs> Just like that. Besides overcoming the challenge of building the tunnel, engineers had to make it earthquake proof. Earthquakes have struck Istanbul in varying degrees for over 2,000 years. But experts believe that within the next few decades, a major quake could surpass them in scale. 
To protect the city, tunnel engineers turn to state-of-the-art technology. And this is a seismic joint. So when there's an earthquake, it'll, it'll just absorb all the tremors, right? Yes, right. Then other this tunnel? This is the biggest seismic joint in the world. So you can say that this is a bit of a beast of a tunnel, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Finally, we've reached Europe. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Here, of course, we were trying to connect two continents, but the ultimate purpose was to connect many people, to unite people. This is the bridge from Europe to Asia once again. During my long journey between East and West, I've witnessed how technology transforms Silk Road countries. From trains, to bridges, to cars. Innovation is an amazing diplomatic and economic tool. Destination X is about gathering people to explore unknown territories. There's a lot of talk now about a new Silk Road bringing wealth to people. And we had experienced part of this new Silk Road movement. Our journey started at the ancient capital, Xi'an. And here you are now in Istanbul. What an accomplishment. As I celebrate the completion of the Destination X tour, I marvel at how the exchange of cultures and knowledge remain relevant and alive on the Silk Road. From the Mogao Grottoes to the Karas Canals, our ancestors built the foundations of our destiny. Fast forward to the 21st century, we have arrived at a time where a new Silk Road renaissance is taking shape and is being unlocked by the speed of access. Expedition X may be over, but the Silk Road Rising has only just begun.